Father Desmet was a Jesuit missionary who was the most prominent Catholic missionary in the 19th century. He came to the Pacific Northwest in 1840. He was uh, invited by native people, but being invited by native people is not the same thing as getting an assignment from the Jesuits. The Jesuit superior in St. Louis would have to weigh what this extension of Jesuits from St. Louis was going to cost. Uh, he was an administrator, and so when Father Desmet found these Indians, uh, in fact, they found him. What happened was he was a missionary among the Potawatomi Indians at Council Bluffs, Iowa. And one day he saw a group of canoes beaching themselves in front of his mission from the Missouri River. And he went down to greet them, and as he went down to greet them, he heard them speaking to one another in French. French, his native language. How, how could this be that they were speaking French? Well, he came to find out that they were Iroquois Indians. But the Iroquois Indians are from the Jesuit area of New France. They're from the St. Lawrence River. So how did, well, what happened was when fur trade companies moved across the map of Canada, they more or less leapfrogged across each other. In other words, the Hudson's Bay Company would trap out a certain area, and the competing company, the Northwest Company, would leapfrog over them to areas that hadn't been trapped out. And their paddlers, the paddlers for the Northwest Company, were recruited from the Jesuit schools in the St. Lawrence Valley. And when they reached the Pacific in Canada, then they were released from their job and they went south and they found a home among Pacific Northwest Indians. And so it was these Iroquois Indians who told the Indians of the Pacific Northwest that there is a new world out there. There is a master of life, and there are these men who can teach you about the master of life and a new set of ideas. And so these Iroquois were central to the bringing of Christianity to the tribes of the Pacific Northwest. And at a certain point, those Iroquois said, well, if you don't believe me, we will go to where the Jesuits are and we will ask them to come to us. And so that is how those native people, primarily the Flatheads, but also we believe there were some Nez Perce in that group, that's how they were on the Missouri River on their way to St. Louis to knock on the door of the Jesuits at St. Louis University. And Father Desmet met them, found out what their goal was, and he followed them in a couple of weeks. And then he said to his superior, I can take that assignment. I would be good at that assignment. I've had experience with the Potawatomi. I am now a full-fledged Jesuit priest. I am ready to take this assignment. What each tribe hoped to gain by having a missionary is a complicated story, as you can well imagine. They wanted to know more about this master of life that they had heard from the Iroquois Indians. But the Iroquois Indians had oversold the idea. And so the native people of the Pacific Northwest the interior Pacific Northwest, those native people had a higher expectation that there would not just be to learn the story of a master of life that they had not known before, but they came to extrapolate what the Iroquois had told them into believing that perhaps 
they could now be great warriors because they would have a spiritual dimension that if not make them bulletproof, and they did not believe that, but it would make them superior warriors. And so the truth of the matter is that when you read the letters of the Jesuit missionaries, after only just a few years, before the Jesuits had been here even five years, they were writing that there was troublesome indications that the native people were taking their Christian teachings and believing that it had made them so superior that in fact they were becoming troublesome to their neighbors. They were no longer negotiating the differences between hunting privileges between, say, the Flatheads and the Crows. Now they were taking an arbitrary, forthright position that they were superior and you had better not challenge us militarily for we have a secret weapon. Now the reason I said that that becomes very complicated is because the tribe just across the border in Canada, the Blackfeet. That tribe was very military and that tribe received weapons from Canadian fur trappers who did not have the same concern about arming the native people of the Pacific Northwest. So the Blackfeet became bullies in the Pacific Northwest and the Flatheads believed that uh, they were now going to be able to uh, go up against that tribe for they, they had learned something about the master of life. They had a secret weapon. But I said it became a complicated story because Father Desmet and his conferees, that means his fellow Jesuits, they believed that the best way to bring peace to the Pacific Northwest among the tribes was to go to the Blackfeet and to say to them, we need to have peace. Peace is what the master of life wants us to be. We should meet, we should talk, we should make ourselves friendly instead of hostile. Well, that was the attitude of Father Desmet and his conferees, and to that end, Father Desmet, in 1844 and 45, went north across the 49th parallel into the Blackfeet territory to talk to them. But now you see what happens is when the Flathead find out that Desmet has gone to their enemies, they now believe that he is the moral equivalent of what we would call today a, a, a arms manufacturer who is arming both sides in the war. And so the native people of the Pacific Northwest, interior tribes, they then had a falling out with the Jesuits because they believed that Father Desmet and his conferees were now telling the Blackfeet the same ideas that they were telling them and they had suddenly lost their advantage. And so it's very clear that some of the missions will now be closed because there is a lack of ardor by the native people. So this again goes to the idea that Father Desmet is a cultural broker because while he is in the Pacific Northwest, there are dynamics that are going on that 
he could see but not foretell. He could see them after they happened, but he did not have the length of vision to see that when he went to the Blackfeet, he was endangering his relationship with the interior tribes of the Flathead, the Nez Perce, the Kootenai, the Coeur d'Alene, the Spokanes. And so when Desmet left the Pacific Northwest in 1846, the Pacific Northwest was in perhaps, in all honesty, more turmoil than when he had come. And that wasn't what he had intended there to be. Father Desmet was relieved of his position by the Father General of the Society in Rome. He was unhappy because he wanted to be out on the trail. He wanted to be in the Indian camp. He wanted to be in a canoe, on the back of a mule, exploring. So he was very unhappy. He was very discouraged to be back in St. Louis. But in time, he got an invitation from the federal government, the United States federal government, and there was going to be, in 1851, a gigantic Indian conference at Fort Laramie in present-day Wyoming. And they asked Father DeSmet, who had such a touch with the native people, would he go and be of assistance? And so his superiors in St. Louis said, well, you're not really supposed to be leaving here, going back on the trail, but it would not be politic for us to turn down an invitation of this magnitude so yes, Father DeSmet can go. And so that is how Father DeSmet reinstated himself as an Indian missionary. He went to this conference, and from there he uh, received invitations from other tribes, will you come and visit us? And he accepted those invitations, and little by little he put himself back into the missionary mode and he continued to be in that missionary mode until he died in 1873. So yes, he did come back to the Pacific Northwest numerous times, and every time he came, the Indians remembered him, recognized him, and he had an opportunity to do good for his, what he called, his family. His legacy is that he is remembered by the tribes. The Coeur d'Alene tribe, for example, will never forget him. In fact, their headquarters uh, church on the Coeur d'Alene Indian Reservation is at Desmet, Idaho. So they do not easily forget this man. He is in their oral history. He is recognized by the Jesuits of the Pacific Northwest as the great founder, the very first of the superiors for the Rocky Mountain Mission. And that is the, the, the reason why his statue is outside uh, on the campus right in front of College Hall at the Gonzaga University campus because he is the founding father of the Jesuits in the Pacific Northwest. His legacy would include that here at Gonzaga University, the highest award that we can give to anyone is the Desmet Medal. We have, in the Northwest, we have Desmet Streets. Uh, and so uh, we have a Desmet Dormitory here on the campus. There's no question but that uh, everybody will recognize the name Desmet in the Pacific Northwest, even when they don't know why they should know his name, they do in fact know his name and they know he is a
pioneer, but uh, they don't know as well as they should, but then of course nobody knows history as well as they should. They don't know as well as they should who he was, what he did as a broker of culture in the Pacific Northwest.